Hello there folks, my name is Ben and welcome to a Shots Fired Airsoft video and today I'm looking at the Golden Eagle uh, range of uh, airsoft shotguns. These are gas powered, um, essentially they are similar to what you would get if you bought a TM870 gas shotgun, except these are about, well they could be as th a third of the price pretty much. Now, apologies, we've got a little bit of noise next door, that's uh, Pixie the mechanic next door who's uh, obviously getting out of business but today I thought we'd have a bit of change and uh, do most of this review in the unit which gives me a lot more room to work with I can have better camera angles and that sort of stuff but like I say I actually my unit that I do the shooting in and that is in quite a, a busy little corner of the Isle of Wight where we have quite a few uh, you know, mechanics and uh, bike collectors and all sorts which is as you may have noticed in quite a lot of my videos um, I have motorcycles in place and that is one of the reasons I ended up down here because it's a, a nice little community of, uh, of bikes and mechanics in general so uh, without further ado, I'm just going to get into the, uh, well, it's not an unboxing, but I'm just going to show you what you get in the box when you buy one of these shotguns. These are both kind of a year old and I've used them quite extensively in gameplay. However, I do keep my guns in pretty good nick, so as you will see when I open this, it doesn't really look like it's been used. Let's get on with it. Okay, so when you get one of these, they always come in a nice printed box, so no sort of brown cardboard cheap stuff here. Um, this is the M8871 which is a wood furniture sawn off shotgun. Now this actually, although it's, not, although it's not the cheaper end of the segment because of the materials it's made from, it is actually uh, just one of the more basic in features. Um, and I'll show you in a bit, I've got an M8877 I think it is, it's one under the top one, uh, which has just about all the features you can get apart from the key mod road hangar. So with that said, let's have a quick look at what we get inside the box. You get some nice foam packaging. Again, we're not talking about a mega cheap gun, it's just cheap for what it is. And as you will see in here, uh, we have a speed loader, a little bag of BBs, which is still in there, I'm throwing them away yet. Uh, you get three shotgun shells with this, although there are actually six in this box, and these are neutral um, shotgun shells because the original Golden Eagle ones are not fantastic. Um, I tend to find that if you get three, at least one of them would be broken. If you get six, at least two of them would be broken, but whatever. And then we have our shotgun itself, <clears throat> which is very nicely made. Like I say, it has wooden furniture, so this isn't simulated uh, wood or anything like that. It is um, actual wood. You have a safety there, just behind the trigger. Put it on there, you've got a safe. That is your release for your shells. This one does not have a shell door. I've removed this, so I say this is one of my gameplay guns because I actually run a drum in this, and I'll show you that in a little bit. Uh, we have the pumps, obviously this is the wood. Obviously it's not loaded, so I'm just gonna rack it back for you. And when we rack it back, that reveals a switch in here. At the moment this is set on three shots, and I'll tell you why that is in a moment. But if you push that forward, it will select six shots. Every rack of the uh, pump will give you a six shot out of this weapon. In terms of rails and sights, on this one we have nothing whatsoever. Um, we have a bead sight on the front of the of the gun, and uh, that's pretty much it. So that's all we've got to aim. And I say firing, you have a nice direct trigger pull, like that, and you get a nice whack from the uh, from the gas. It runs on normal green gas. I've never tried it. Never tried it on anything um, sort of beefier than that. So black gas or red gas. Don't know how it will work if you run into maintenance problems um, or just general damage to the weapon. Uh, one other thing I will say, it does have a screw off magazine cap and in there it's got a little sprung chamber so if you want to you can pop spare shells in there because normally people consider this a pain in the backside doing it this way but this has no shell holder or any mount for a shell holder or anything like that. I mean you could probably get a few a felt pushed up around the centre of it there if you wanted to carry more shells. Okay, so moving along a bit, um, you do get a nice little printed manual in there. Uh, use your safety stuff, shows you how to use it, features of the weapon, how to carry things on it. Um, these are generic manuals that you get with all of them. So a lot of them have a separate gas tank like they do in a Maruri 870, um, which would be in the sort of stock holder. Uh, you get a full exploded diagram to show you how everything works. Again, this is on a full size one, but essentially this, apart from the stock being different, 
and it having a lack of rails, the mechanism is going to be very much the same if you are breaking it down for maintenance or for repair. Again, it shows you how to fill the weapon. We're even using Maru gas, which is a bit cheeky. Um, this is the uh, sort of the other setup I've got, which I'll show you in a minute. Again, it, it also has, it shows you how to fill your sort of uh, uh, this, this weapon here and various other types. Shows you how to load a shell, how to rack the pump and uh, how to switch between three and six shots, which is the standard feature of all of these weapons. So it's a nice little manual. Um, so it is generic, it is for all of them, um, but uh, it does explain pretty much everything about the gun that you need to know. Now to get a bit more specific over the features and workings of this weapon, um, like I said, this is a wood furnishing. It's deliberately very uh, basic in terms of its features. It's supposed to look clean. It's supposed to look like a naughty little sawn off. So for that, in that respect, it isn't the most useful thing for, say, field combat, but the CQB, where, you know, uh, you're firing six BBs at someone, you, you don't really need that much of aiming assistance. You kind of point it in a general direction of fire and everything with it, the spread's going to get hit. So it could be two people stood together. You're probably going to tag both of them out, which is fantastic for that style of gameplay. Um, the other, the tactical shotgun um, is a bit more for sort of field combat, has a longer range, longer barrel, higher FPS, because one of the things we'll get into is that this on six shot has a nice manageable FPS for CQB and on three shot it's still not too hot. Uh, one issue that this weapon does have, well there's two issues that this weapon has, um, although it's never affected its actual working, is the pump grip has a lot of play in it. And this I think is because this pump grip being wooden is kind of just floating on the gun. Although there's, there's no play front to back, it's only play kind of up and down because this is essentially pushed on as the gun is built and the rails sit in front. So when you pull it back, it doesn't move front to backwards, but there's no screws retaining it in place on the rails, um, which I guess you could do. If you really bothered you, you could drill and drill and actually mount it on the uh, pump grip rather than just having it sort of rest and pull. So, uh, one of the things that as you use these, as they start to cool down, you get a lovely bit of gas burst out the front when it's, uh, as they start to cool down, which makes it look very authentic along with the sound. Obviously no blowback on these, uh, there's no blowback on any gas shotgun, um, simply not, not possible with the mechanisms, but it is a lovely to use weapon. The trigger is really nice and you know, fantastic, it's really <laughs> good, short trigger. Um, the other issue it has, as I said there are two issues, is that it doesn't always pick up six shots when you set it to six shots. In my experience, it, it will kind of veer between four and five, and every now and then you have the perfect storm and then you will get six BBs. Um, however, for, for me, that isn't really a massive problem, um, although it is an issue. Uh, you, and it can make it difficult to shot count. So obviously on six shot, you would have five shots. If it fires kind of four or five, and sometimes six, it's kind of difficult to count how many shells you have. However, like I was saying, I don't really have that problem because I use one of these. which is your Battle Axe, M870 um, drum mag. And this holds 1200 rounds. And this turns this weapon into cheat mode. Uh, one of the other things that I will get to is gas capacity on this is stunted because of the hand grip. Essentially gas reservoir is in here. But this on a full charge will fire 70 to 75 shots on a warm day. Which means that with this in, you, it's full cheat mode engaged really, you, you don't run into issues with capacity, you don't run into issues with uh, gas usage. Um, if you carried like a miniature green gas on you, if you keep charging it, um, you could run an entire game without really loading the BBs in the drum mag, which is really handy. Um, the drum mag itself fits in like a shell, so it goes in like that, and then you have um, quite the setup. Obviously I'm not going to rack it now because this mag is actually charged, so. But it doesn't really increase the weight of the weapon that much. This is actually quite heavy. Um, I did bring my scales up and in a minute I will weigh both the tack shotgun and this to give you an idea. And then I'll go into a bit more information about the, uh, the heavy, more heavily featured tactical shotgun. And then we'll do a bit of firing with them, which is always fun. Shotguns are brilliant fun. I am a bit limited on gas, but I say one fill in this is good for about 70 shots. 
and one filling the tack shotgun that's got a full length M4 buffer tube style stock, which is full of gas reservoir, it's closer to 110 shots, which is insane. Um, so that essentially you're talking about applying 600 BBs between gas refills on six shot. Alright, so let's move along. Okay, so here we have the more serious end of the segment. Um, this is my M8877, I think it is, I think that's the model number. I believe the M8878 is the one with the key mod rail handguard, but essentially it's the same otherwise. So this is the same or similar receiver, although this is drilled for a top mount rail, as you'll see in a moment. Um, it has the same, very much the same features. So there's your shell door release. You see how nicely it works on these. On the, some of the, the Simon Spring shotguns, it's quite an effort sometimes to release the shell and the uh, shell door. However, these being all metal, which is something I should have mentioned before, these uh, even the ones with the Palmer extensions and all that are all metal. Um, it has the same safety. Again, nice snake, very positive. Uh, you have an M4 style buffer tube stop is nice and extendable and extends to various different lengths. This is quite long um, as a weapon, it's over a meter long, especially at full extension. So one of the things I will say is I actually, I'm six foot one-ish, uh, quite you know, large hands and long arms and all that sort of stuff. And I use this on the second setting. I find that the most comfortable. Um, so even if you are say six, five, six, eight, you know, some sort of monster, um, giganto if you will, this will probably still be big enough for you to use. Uh, so along with the sort of uh, very military spec buffer tube, we have the AR slash M4 style pistol grip, I believe it's AR, um, which is nice, very economic, uh, ergonomic to use, and you can fit other stocks, to, uh, sorry, oh yeah, you can fit other stocks obviously on the buffer tube, you can also fit other um, pistol grips. So again, it's more militaristic in that, in that way. Um, you do get two quick uh, detach sling points with the gun, so QD slings, as I say, and they can go in numerous places on the weapon. So you can have one at the front, one at the back, there's one on the other side down here. Um, or you can have them both on the back, both on the front, whatever you fancy, and you have a permanent sling mount in the back. So there's plenty of options for strapping this weapon to you because it is quite heavy. Uh, this obviously has a six shot shell holder. Now, I run this on shells because uh, this is even more cheap mode engaged when it comes to uh, using like say the drum uh, that's why it still has the shell door in it you it's just kind of unfair in the CQB because you don't run out of gas and you don't run out of rounds like I say that this whole buffer tube is a gas reservoir and it will fire about 110 shots when it's fully gassed on a warm day it drops to about 90 when it's cold but it's still very good um, and like I say, we have this enormous monolithic rail all the way down the uh, top of the weapon. And this is obviously standard Picatinny, and it, it comes with these nice, uh, uh, although it's somewhat sometimes difficult to release, lift up sights. Um, and they are all metal as well, so they come with the weapon. Uh, you have the extended barrel, and this is a sort of a standard polymer um, pump grip. This does have the ability to put um, shells in it, but it actually has an Allen bolt in the front. So you, <laughs> it's, it's nigh on pointless doing it, especially when you've got six shots on the side. So obviously you've got room to carry, if each one of these is 30, 30, 60, 90, 120, 150, 180. So you've got 180 BBs to get through, plus one in the weapon. So 210 BBs on you, which is, uh, if you're using six shot, 35 shots so you can completely burn through your um, seven shells like three times before the gas will run out so it actually paid to have like a, a bandolier with some shotgun shells on but old school style with this uh, again on on the um, sawn off and this you do get a serial number on the side and I haven't even removed these rail stickers uh, these warning stickers because to be honest they're under the shells I barely ever see them so I haven't even thought about it but I have had this for about a year um, and it has never failed, never let me down. This is far more reliable in terms of firing three or six. So if you select six, you get six. If you select three, you get three. And it isn't anything to do with the shells or the drum mags. The little shorty does it on either. It won't necessarily do a six shot. Which could be just uh, 
a tolerancing issue within the loading magnet uh, feed. So I say this is about £170. But it, it, the price does vary dramatically depending on where you find it. Um, if you can get the chance to buy this on a constant, you might get this for as low as 140 which is a absolute bargain. Because if you were to spec a, a Tokyo Breacher to this, or um, so just a normal Mirai um, M870 to this, you're looking at 450 quid plus. So this is an absolute bargain and it fires immaculate. It is brilliant and I'll show you that during the firing test. Um, this side of the gun, very similar. You've just got the mounts for the top row. So it takes off these two bolts on this side and two bolts on the other. Exactly the same setup as before. So when you rack it, you hold it back and you've got your three and six shots. This one's set to six at the moment because that's what I use it on. Again, the gun is empty, so just take care of firing it, but I always fire it away from me, obviously, and it's something that isn't going to get damaged. Uh, so yeah, there isn't really too much else to say on this particular one, other than the fact this is absolutely marvellous as a um, airsoft shotgun. It's probably my favourite one that I've ever used. And uh, for the money, it is, in my opinion, unbeatable. Uh, the one thing I will say about this is using this in CQB, uh, you often have issues measuring FPS with multi um, barrel and, and multi BB weapons because it's very difficult to get an accurate reading. Now, I'm just going to hop in here. Um, at the time, I didn't do a very good job of explaining this. However, when people say you can put one BB in a shell and chrono these, I don't think that's really true. I don't think you get an accurate result. Um, with both the Springers and the gas shotguns, you are dealing with a single um, gas reservoir or a, a single plunger. And then it, it empties into the three, the three barrels, essentially. So when you fire one BB, you only have resistance of one barrel. So a lot of that gas and a lot of that air from the plunger system is going to escape down the other two barrels unimpeded. And air will always take, the same as water, the same as electricity, the, the, um, the path of least resistance, which means that when you fire these with one BB in, your BB that is firing out the barrel is going to have less gas pressure behind it because a lot of it's escaping out the other two barrels, which means you get a lower FPS. So it's quite probable that if you put one BB in this and fire it um, through a chronograph to get a chrono reading, you're going to get a low FPS reading, which is how a lot of these things get chronoed at sites and such and such. And that's how they end up being used um, in places maybe they shouldn't be. So, for example, in CQB and free shot, I suspect this is around 400 FPS um, from the kind of injuries it leaves on people and all that sort of stuff. So, I say I don't use it on free shot. Six shot does calm it down a fair amount. And I think that gets us under the 350 FPS. However, it's just still very powerful. Um, and I say it, well, mine is anyway. Um, so I say I don't use it on free shot and CQB, and I, I suspect it is somewhere near 400 FPS, maybe north of that. Um, it is a large gas reservoir. It is a long barrel. It's not outside the realms of possibility. So just 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 a note to make there. Like I say, you you can argue with me in the comments and all that sort of stuff. However, it is simple physics that a single gas reservoir or a single plunger system is going to dump most of its air out of two empty barrels rather than the one that there's a resistance there is resistance in, no matter how small that resistance is. So, yeah, that's that's my kind of take on the whole situation. When people say you can chrono on a single BB, I don't think you can. And the fact it ranges out to about 45, 50 meters. Um, that was the other thing I've got to say. These are fixed hop. Um, so essentially you will need a 0.25 BB, which is no no problem. Um, it's kind of the same as the Simon shotguns. Um, they're a fixed uh, hop up, but 0.25s work both fantastically in the Sawnoff and this. The Sawnoff has stunted ranges because it's not quite as potent. This will you know knock its knock its BBs out to sort of 50 meters on a 0.25. Sawnoff's more like 35, 40. Um, so they're actually quite useful as a range weapon as well. Though you probably wouldn't think it. Um, but this fires very nicely, all the BBs travel straight with good hop. So you end up in a situation where you can use these at range. Um, the sawn off less so because it doesn't have the sights and all that sort of stuff. Obviously on this you could take the sights off and have a little red dot on it and use it like a combat rifle. Just a pump action one and uh, it would do quite a good job, I can assure you. So that's enough waffling, well, let's get into the firing. Okay, so before we, just before we get into the shooting test, I'm just going to show you the weights of these. So this with no shells or anything applied in it or anything like that is 3,023 grams, so about three kilos. So you're looking at about six and a half, seven pounds for this weapon. 
So it is quite heavy if you're lugging it about all day. Uh, I'll just grab the little sawn off. Okay, so the little sawn off is about 1800 grams uh, with no shells applied. If I pop the mag in, now that brings her up to about 2.2 .2 kilograms. So, so the drum mag is about 400 grams. Again, so it's not heavy for its size, but it, it's a chunky little weapon for, it, for its size. It's quite you know, beefy in terms of its denseness. I don't know what I was really expecting with the egg, but that is uh, instant regret. There's bits of shell here, here, um, yeah. It got pretty far around. <laughs> so there you have it. That is my kind of like little overview of the uh, Golden Eagle shotgun range. Um, I've got a sort of basic and a full tack. And uh, they're both marvellous bits of kit. You do, uh, you do get a lot of poke for your money. Um, it's quite powerful weapons. Obviously, when we're shooting things, it's just kind of shooting it for fun. But it's nice to have some reactive targets. The egg wasn't such a good idea, but it definitely shows that when one of these things blows through something like that, <laughs> it shows you the kind of the hydrostatic shock you get from a liquid-filled target, and that is usually quite indicative of a decent amount of power. The uh, the way they dump energy into things is quite impressive. Like a lot of the time you shoot a, you, know, you shoot a, um, a, a BB for a can and the can will just sort of fall over where it is in place. It won't generally get dragged halfway off the uh, table and halfway across the unit like it does with one of these. But these have always been a, a favorite of mine. I think shotguns are really good fun. Um, I do want to pick up the shell ejecting shotgun at some point, which obviously is, is purely pretty much for blinking and stuff like that. because. Dealing with full-blown shells in airsoft uh, game environments is, well, for the more hardcore and committed people, you might say. So I would highly recommend you go out and get yourself one of these. You say that they're not the most reliable when it comes to flicking between three and six shots. Quite often you'll get three, sometimes you get six, sometimes you get four, sometimes you get five. But you can pretty much guarantee that you're you're going to get multiple BBs out the end of the barrel unless you're running out of share, uh, uh, BBs. And I think they're really good fun. Um, I myself, I'm never gonna, with them being this decent, I'm never going to stump up the cash required to pick up a Tokyo Mirai uh, shotgun, purely because these at a lower price point are just as much fun. Um, and I, I have to say, apart from being a bit dicky when it comes to um, the three and six shot selection, I've got to say that I really haven't had any problems or issues with them. Hold gas, I've never picked one up and it's been empty when I've left it full, it doesn't leak. Either of them do. Uh, and they're just hilarious to use. So I do have to be a bit careful in CQB how I use them because they are a bit hot, I think, for the 350 FPS limit. Although I think on six shot I really calms down enough to, um, to to be used in that sort of situation. So again, uh, I've been Ben. It's been a Shot Spider Airsoft video. And I hope if you're thinking about a gas shotgun, you think about the Golden Eagle range of gas shotguns. I've got 
a little ASG Mark 23 on the way. Um, so that'll be my next review that you see. Um, I've also got a new chronograph coming, which will be handy for chronographing the ASG. Um, so I'm quite looking forward to that. I'm going to do a little review on the chronograph as well because it's a new pro product. So I'm half expecting it to either not work or be completely and utterly inaccurate. But some of the reviews I've seen so far on it have been pretty good. So I'm hoping to go and pass on to you a good review of that uh, chronograph. The ASG Mark 23, I'm quite interested in playing one of those because I've never played with the Tokyo Mirai Mark 23, which obviously is one of the most popular non-blowback pistols in Airsoft. Um, so I'll be quite interested to see what the ASG uh, Mark 23 can do. So that's all I've got for you for the minute, and I'll see you later. Thank you very much.